original Xbox launched in 2001 at an interesting crossroads in video games. Most of us were playing on our CRTs in the living room, but the Xbox was designed for the future. It would support progressive scan modes and HD resolutions in widescreen all the way up to 1080i. But this era was before HDMI had become a standard in televisions, and any display capable of outputting progressive scan modes would come with component inputs. Microsoft made sure whatever display you owned, you would be covered, with different AV packs to support your setup. Everything from simple composite output to S-video and component with the HD AV pack. It meant that enthusiasts with expensive flat panel plasma and LCDs at the time could play Xbox and take advantage of any game that supported 720p or 1080i. Fast forward to today, enthusiasts are looking for the best way to display retro game consoles, and the original Xbox would be no exception. If you want the best possible video signal out of your original Xbox, you do have some choices. The first option, of course, would be the official HD AV component cables. But these cables not only are hard to find, they are becoming quite expensive. There are alternatives, however. You can easily get no-name brand component cables from Amazon, but these aren't very good at all, outputting noisy signals with extremely poor color banding. In recent time, the obvious choice has been a modern HDMI solution. Companies like Pound and Hyperkin have released HDMI cables for the original Xbox, but the results have been quite mixed. Myself personally, I've never had a good experience with these cables at all, and, as you can see, the results speak for themselves. But some modding enthusiasts have come up with their own designs that are at least on parity with the very sought after HD AV component cables. The XO SVP, for example, is my personal favorite that outputs a clean signal, but it is a little fiddly to set up and requires you to route the audio separately. In recent times, however, Game consoles such as the PlayStation 1, Sega Dreamcast, and Nintendo 64 all have had internal HDMI modifications that directly tap from the motherboard. The PS1 Digital was something that we recently reviewed on the channel, and the results speak for themselves. So it's unfortunate that the original Xbox has never had a similar modification. That is, until now. I personally have been waiting for something like this for a while. This is a purely digital Xbox HDMI solution that doesn't utilize any type of analog to digital encoding. Rather, it taps the actual signal directly from the motherboard. The Xbox HDMI mod is the first purely digital video output mod for the OG Xbox that taps directly from the pixel data bus on the GPU. What this means is you'll get crystal clear lag free video, a first for the hardware, and it also outputs 5.1 digital audio all through a single HDMI output. The board has been developed by Dustin Holden, also known as Love Megahertz. The Xbox HDMI is the first of two HDMI mods for the original Xbox. The second, known as Xbox Digital, is being developed by Citrus 3000 and will be coming later on. But back to the Xbox HDMI, it's currently being sold for $60, and this is a no-cut mod, which is entirely reversible. But with all HDMI modifications, it requires installation, which is not recommended for beginners. Now, before we get started, I do want to say a big thank you to Dustin from Make Megahertz for sending me out a Xbox HDMI review unit to review on the channel for you guys. So let's walk through everything that we know. The Xbox HDMI supports all Xbox resolutions from 480i all the way up to 1080i, but keep in mind there is no internal upscaling. Unlike the PS1 Digital, where all games can be upscaled directly to 960p or 1080p via the firmware, the Xbox HDMI will output HDMI at the resolution that the game supports. The good news with this is that there are many games that support at least 480p progressive and around 60 titles that run at 720p and even a handful that output native 1080i. 
With that, let's take a closer look. Everything captured has been directly taken from the Xbox HDMI going into my capture device with no additional post-processing. So what you will see here is what you get and the results are impressive. And for some reason, if you're not satisfied with the stock one-to-one -one video signal out of the Xbox itself, or perhaps your TV may need some tweaking, there is a config utility that you can utilize to adjust the Luma, CB and CR signals individually. It is important to keep in mind that this utility is not something that's resident in the firmware, rather it's a separate application that you can launch from an Xbox dashboard. So what this means is, in order to utilize this configuration tool, you'll need a modified Xbox. The Xbox HDMI is also firmware updatable, which is a cool feature but it means you'll need access to this application as well. This isn't a big deal in 2020 when most Xboxes out there are soft modded, but if you do have an original stock Xbox, then you will at least need to get your Xbox soft modded in order to run this configuration utility. But let's go back to the video quality itself. At 480p, the image quality looks great, but it does look a little soft in some games, maybe even a little blurry. And you might be wondering, why doesn't it look any sharper? And this is no fault of the Xbox HDMI. The original Xbox utilized DirectX 8.1 as its graphics API and in many instances would resort to bilinear filtering and other smoothing techniques to smooth out jaggies. Anti-aliasing techniques like this were starting to be utilized, especially on the Xbox. On a CRT, you wouldn't even notice this, but on a direct HDMI capture, it's quite noticeable. But bilinear filtering wasn't the main culprit. One other feature that the Xbox baked into its hardware to stop 480i signals from flickering so much on a CRT was to heavily soften the image. There are five possible levels of flickering and 98% of games use the maximum by default, which can look quite soft. A great example of this is the unlockable Panzer Dragoon game in Panzer Dragoon Auto. If you compare it to the Sega Saturn version, it's quite noticeable and it's not something that I'm a big fan of. In the homebrew and emulation community, however, often emulators would provide options to disable bilinear filtering and disable the flicker filter for a good crisp looking display. But unfortunately for most games, they were stuck with the defaults, which was maximum and soft. I do want to stress this because this is no fault of the Xbox HDMI. There are also some custom BIOSes that do offer disabling the flicker filter for games. But in my experience, your mileage on these may vary. But all is not lost, even still at 480p there are some games out there that are beautifully crafted that still look amazing even to this day. Take a look at Dead or Alive 3 or Ninja Gaiden, both games by Team Ninja. Two games that look fantastic even all these years later. These are timeless classics that deserve a place in anyone's original Xbox collection and they absolutely pop on the Xbox HDMI. Another company, Smilebit, would also do some amazing work on the original Xbox and every game on the Xbox HDMI looks absolute top quality. Let's do some side-by-side -side comparisons. If we take a look at OutRun 2006 Coast to Coast, we can compare the Xbox HDMI with the official HDAV component cables, as well as the pound Xbox HDMI cables. The Xbox HDMI is the clear winner over the pound HDMI and does look slightly better than the official HDAV component cables. But to be honest, the improvements aren't really that noticeable. And this is one of the disadvantages of the Xbox HDMI. It does not support any type of internal upscaling to 960p or 1080p, unlike the PS1 Digital. But let's move on to 720p, and this is where the Xbox HDMI really starts to shine. Games like Tony Hawk Underground, Crash Team Nitro, and Amp 2 all support native 720p, and this for me is where the Xbox HDMI really starts to stand out. As you can see, the image quality is absolutely brilliant. 
easily the best image quality that I've seen on an original Xbox at this resolution. Very impressive stuff. If we do some comparisons with Soul Calibur, which runs at a native 720p, comparing cheap component cables that I picked up from Amazon with the official HD AV component pack, as well as the Xbox HDMI, you can see the clarity of the Xbox HDMI is just a little bit better than the HD AV component pack, which is for me, one of the reasons why you wanna consider picking up an Xbox HDMI over the official cables. Then of course there is 1080i, and once again, it looks a level above the 720p signal. This is Enter the Matrix, a native 1080i game that runs on the original Xbox. And while the game itself isn't particularly memorable, it does look quite impressive running at this native resolution. So what are my final thoughts about the Xbox HDMI? Let's be honest, you're watching this because you want to see the best video quality out of an original Xbox. If you have the skills to install the unit yourself, for $60, it's the best video quality you'll get hands down. But on the other hand, if you don't, then you'll need to pay someone to install it for you, which will most certainly increase the cost. Then you might be better off going with a high quality aftermarket solution like the XO SVP or the Chimeric HDMI video adapter. These are both analog to digital converters and they look very good with only a very slight reduction in quality. On the other hand, there is a new HDMI solution coming from Citrus 3000 and competition is always great for the customer. So it might be worth holding off for that. But for right now, the Xbox HDMI is an excellent solution that does everything it's advertised to do. It's very well priced and I have absolutely no complaints about it. It's been a blast revisiting some old games and seeing some games really pop on the hardware. And with that, if you are comfortable installing your own or have means to do so, then I have no reservations recommending this product to you. So there are my thoughts on the Xbox HDMI. Let me know what you guys thought about this in the comments below. And as always guys, if you liked this video, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye for now.